So what we're going to do now in this video is take a look at the unit circle and what we're going to do, we're going to take a look at the y value. We're going to take a look at sine theta and see how that varies as theta increases, right? As we move around the circle, what happens to the y value as we move around the circle? Because the y value is our y part of the, of the coordinate, right? Of our, of our uh, Cartesian coordinate system, right? And the cos is just the x value, right? So if we could understand what happens to y as we move around the circle, and what happens to x as we move around the circle, the x-coordinate, then we've gone one step further in understanding the unit circle, which is basically our ideal cyclic function, right? So let's take this graph, and uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this piece of paper off and take one of these pieces of paper from under here and put it on here, because we're going to use graph paper. Might as well be as accurate as we can. We're going to use graph paper to graph the sine function, to graph the cos function, and to graph the tan function. And hopefully we can, you know, fit it all onto this space right here. And these are going to be curved that, curves that hopefully you've seen before or you're familiar with or, you know, they'll, it, it's something that you recognize. And they're, they're beautiful. And they're, they, they come into play in all aspects of society, in all aspects of our lives, in all aspects of nature, right? Because light wave, the way you see things, the way light penetrates your eyes, that's just a wave. The way you hear me, the sound that you're hearing right now, those are vibrations. And those are basically just waves, right? So if we're able to understand the cyclic function, right? If we're able to understand what happens to us as we move around the circle, what happens to our coordinate system, the X and Y parts of the coordinate system, then we've gone a pretty big step towards understanding how wave function works, right? And the ideal wave functions are basically our sine and cosine functions. So let's take this guy off and keep this in mind, right? You're going to have to know what these are, sine, cosine, and tan. Sokotoa, right? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cos of an angle is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan of an angle is opposite over adjacent. And the range, I should put an E on the range, right? And the range of a function is what the possible y values are, and the domain of a function is what are all the possible x values. So let's just take this off. I'm not, uh, I don't have the best uh, uh, writing, uh, my, I have uh, very poor writing abilities and my spelling uh, is not very good. So hopefully when we're talking about it, you know what these are and maybe you're taking notes yourself, right? So we took this guy down and we're gonna have to access one of these sheets, right? So let me take this down and maybe I'll be able to pull one off without totally removing this. So let's take off this guy and then we'll put it back on again, right?
Will this hold? I think that'll hold. So let's do a little adjustment here. I'm back up again. Cool. So we have our unit circle back up here and I transferred over, switched over the graph paper over here. So what we're about to do is graph us starting here at the coordinate one and zero and us moving around the circle, right? And we're gonna basically go like this. That's how the angle is going to change and it goes, you know, you should be familiar with degrees and uh, just a side note, we will be talking about radians uh, shortly, which is a unit of measure for the angle, it's just a, way we measure the angle which is when you go up in higher level mathematics uh, it's way more useful than degrees right so we will talk about radians later if you're wondering why we haven't talked about it yet but right now what we want to do what i want to do is sort of show you how this all works because we haven't really done any calculations yet right all we're doing right now is getting a full-blown picture of what's going on and learning some of the terminology uh, that we have to learn to be able to understand uh, trigonometry, to be able to understand cyclic functions and triangles and the uh, trig ratios, right? Which is basically kicking us off into trig functions, which is what we're about to do right now. We're about to graph a trig function. And the first, first trig function we're about to graph is sine theta, right? So we're going to graph ourselves moving around a circle, a unit circle, and we're going to see what happens to sine theta, what happens to the ratio of the y versus the hypotenuse. And since the hypotenuse is 1, basically what we're doing is we're taking a look at what happens to the y coordinate of the axes as we move around the circle 1 cycle, right? So our x-axis on this graph is going to be theta, right? And our y-axis is going to be sine theta. So what I'm gonna to try to do is, I'm gonna to try to fit uh, the sine function, the cos function, and the tan function on here. I'm not sure if I'll be able to do all of them. Uh, actually, let's see. Can we go down this far? We can go down that far. I'm pretty sure we'll be able to do uh, all tr three trig ratios. Well, the first three trig, trig ratios um, on this graph, and that's what we're going to do. So let's put our axes here. We're going to do this here. What do we got? One, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. Yeah, let's do that. What we're going to do, we know, as we talked about, the range of 
y values can only go from negative one to one right because that's where we're functioning right now right we can't go beyond lower than negative one and we can't go above one so if this our x-axis is now going to be theta okay and keep in mind we're doing the graphs we're doing the mathematics so it's really up to us what we want to call the x-axis or what we're going to call the y-axis right and that's the power of putting things on a cartesian coordinate system on a grid or graphing things right we can compare anything to anything else and that's what this is that's what a grid is we're trying to find out what the relationship between two units are two uh, two variables are right and variable is just basically something that varies so what we're going to do is going to vary change theta and we're going to find out how the y part in the coordinate changes right so theta is going to be our independent variable on the x-axis and sine theta is going to be our dependent variable and it's going to be dependent on how how theta changes right so what we're going to do we're going to call the x-axis theta and we're going to call the y-axis and we're going to take it one two three four five and we're going to call this sine theta right one two three four five okay so this guy is going to be y which is sine theta y being our y axis here which is sine right so let's take a look at this let's start off at zero and zero for us here means means that we're right here right where theta is zero this is going to basically drop down to here where if we're measuring our angle from the positive x-axis we're at zero degrees right so this is our zero degrees okay and our y if we're at zero degrees just comes down comes down comes down comes down and our y just basically shrinks until it's equal to zero right i hope you can see that right so our y part of the coordinate is going to be zero as well so when we're graphing the sine function when theta the angle is zero sine theta is zero so what we're going to do right now is go around and we're not going to click on every single point here what we're going to do is going to go to the four quadrants to the main places where our y value changes because this guy is going to go from zero y changes from zero goes up goes up goes up to one and then comes back down again to zero and then goes down to negative one and then comes back up again to zero right as you move around the circle doink 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 right so when we're at 90 degrees because as as we move up here that's 90 degrees our y becomes one right and remember we're not here we're not here we're not here we have to be on the circle we can't go off world so at 90 degrees let's check this out one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen so one two three four so at 90 degrees i'm just going to go over four squares here on my grid paper to go to 90 degrees right so this is 90 degrees my y value of the coordinate is one one two three four so at 90 degrees sine theta is one right at 180 degrees because this is 180 degrees if we go half a, uh, if we go half a circle or a straight line is 180 degrees at 180 degree, 80 degrees my y value comes down to zero again right because this guy just drops the y part just drops down to zero 
So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. So at 180 degrees, we're back down to 0. At 270 degrees, we're down here. From the positive x-axis, if we measure it, 270 degrees, we're down here. And our y value is negative 1. Right? So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, so we're down here. And when we go back, when we go to 360 degrees, we're back where we started, and that was zero, right? So our y value becomes zero. Uh, so this was 270 degrees. 1, 2, 3, 4, so that's 360 degrees. Oops, 360 degrees, we come back here. Now the way it works is, this isn't straight lines. This doesn't go, ksh, ksh, ksh. it doesn't do that, right? We can actually create functions that do that, but this doesn't do that right now. And if, if, if you ever, you know, if you want to convince yourself, and we will do this later on when we start uh, doing calculations, right? Um, if you want to convince yourself what this picture looks like, you can just grab a calculator and, uh, you know, punch in, take sign of a certain angle, and find out what the y coordinate is. But the way it's gonna work out is basically this. Because this is curved, right, the y value doesn't go up like a line. It's not gonna be a line. It's actually gonna be a curve as well. So when you take a sign of, let's say 45 degrees, when you're halfway between you know the 90 degrees if you take sine of 45 degrees let's do that why not let's show this to you so I'm just gonna punch in this is an old calculator this is from like 1980s okay it's considered to be um, one of the best uh, solar calculators one of the first ones I think that came out and I still have it in 2015 this was basically my first real calculator that I ever bought and uh, I guess I was just lucky enough to get my hands on one that uh, was amazing uh, so what we're gonna do we're gonna punch in 45 right and we're just gonna take the sine of it so sine of 45 degrees it gives it to you as 0 0.707 and this is a special triangle and we'll, we'll talk about special triangles and how all that stuff is related uh, to the unit circle and uh, how they they come into play in trigonometry once we finish covering just an overview of what's going on because when i when i teach math when i teach trigonometry i really for the first time that i ever get together with someone if they're studying trigonometry I give them a really broad over, overview so they have an appreciation for uh, what it is that we're studying and why we're studying this thing and I hope uh, well, I'm not going too fast in this if you're getting lost in this don't worry too much because we're gonna go through all this again uh, with numbers we're actually gonna do calculations do problems right now my main just as my main purpose is to give you a nice broad overview and then we'll hit up some of the specifics of it right with the special triangles and we'll bring radians into play here so when we take the sine of 45 degrees we get a value of 0 0.707 and what that means is when we're 45 degrees here right when we're halfway in angle in degrees between here and here our y value is 0 0.707 dot 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 it's an irrational number so we're actually here we're not halfway here we're not halfway between zero and one we're further up we're more than three quarters of the way up here our y coordinate is more than three quarters of the way up and if we take cos of 45 degrees right so 45 and we're going to take the cos of it cos of 45 is 0 0.707 again right so we're when we're halfway between angle wise between this and that right our x coordinate is also three quarters of the way through we're not at 0.5 right which is 
a little weird. It's not really intuitive. You think if you're halfway between two lines at 45 degrees, you should be halfway on the coordinate system, but you're not because this thing arches, right? It's a curve. It's an arc. So it, it follows an arc. So once we graph us moving around the circle, the Y coordinate, this is what it's going to look like. Now that is considered to be one period, one full cycle. And this is a circle. And the first video we took, uh, we did, we talked about coterminal angles and this thing is cyclic and it continues on forever. So we can't, you know, this is, we just graphed one period, one cycle. This thing continues. So this thing goes arrow and arrow, right? So this thing keeps on going and back this way again because well the dynamics of it doesn't change if we move this way if we move as a negative degrees negative angle if we go backwards well all that happens is the y is changing in exactly the same way but going negative first right so that's the graph of what the sine function looks like let's graph the cos function Okay, and what we're going to see is it's basically the sine function shifted over 90 degrees. Because if we take this piece of paper, our unit circle, and rotate it where we got the x up here and the sine and the y down here, all it is is it's going to be basically the same graph. But since our x axis is this way, when we're graphing the cos function, it's just going to be shifted over 90 degrees, right? So what we're going to do is do the same thing. Let's do another graph. Um, one, two, three. So what do we got? One, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. So I'm just going to draw this thing straight up. So one, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So we started here. So I'm just going to draw this. I'm going to extend this all the way down. That way we don't have to worry about. Right? So that's where my cos is. So I'm going to take it up to here, my y. So that's going to be 4, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is going to be my x axis for the cos okay so let's graph the cos function and this is going to be versus theta our x axis is again theta how the angle changes and this is our independent variable so what we're going to do is change the angle of the terminal arm right basically move around the circle and we're going to take a look at what happens with our x value right the x part of the coordinate so that's our theta and our y axis here now is cos theta so this is cos theta right So we're going to start off here again, right? And we're going to move counterclockwise, right? So we're going to measure angle from standard position, right? So if we're here, our x coordinate is 1. And since we're on a unit circle, that means cos theta is 1, right? Because cos is adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And adjacent here is, well, there is no adjacent, right? is 1 over 1, which is 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. Negative 1. Right? Oops. And this guy is negative 1 for the 
sine, right? So again, our angle is going to be theta. One, two, three, four. 90 degrees. One, two, three, four. 180 degrees. One, two, three, four. 270 degrees. One, two, three, four. 360 degrees, right? So we're, when we're at zero degrees, our cos is zero. When we go to 90 degrees, our x value is, uh, sorry, when we're, uh, when we're at zero degrees, sine is, uh, cos is one, right? So we're up here. When we go to 90 degrees, we're up here. Our cos value is zero, right? Because the x just keeps on getting smaller. This is our triangle. If we're moving along here, x is getting smaller, smaller, smaller. X is now zero, right? So at 90 degrees, X is zero. At 180 degrees, X is negative one. At 270 degrees, X again becomes zero. X increases, increases as we move around. And as we move back, X, X decreases, right? We go back to zero again and back to one again. So this is what it's gonna look like. sort of sucks over there should be a better curve right this is a curve not a straight line so that's what a cos function cos graph looks like and if you take this thing and if you shift it over 90 degrees that's just a sine function right and these two functions basically music that you listen to uh, is multiple functions sine functions or cos functions just layer it on top of each other right which you know they give you boxes they give you they give you different frequencies you can crunch these things and we're gonna take a look at that stuff right we're gonna go way more intricate we're gonna vertically expand these things we're gonna change the phase right uh, change the period of these things we're gonna translate them transpose them and flip them and we're gonna do a whole bunch of things to these functions but this is our basic trick functions two of them anyway sine and cos what we should do now is just graph the tan function and take a look at what the tan function looks like and uh, just for those of you um, who have followed trigonometry there's three other trig identities as well right and those are cosecant secant and cotangent and those are basically just one over sine one over cos one over tan so we take a look at what happens around a unit circle as we move around uh, as we move around the unit circle to the inverse of these things right uh, to the reciprocal of these things not the inverse to the reciprocal of these things so it, it gives us different graphs and they are interesting and they're cool to take a look at and they do these things do have um, physical um, meanings right uh, I know what the sine, cos, and tan mean, right? Uh, the cosecant, uh, secant, and cotangent, I never remember what they mean, and I never really uh, teach and explain it. But if you look it up, there's a graph. You can find these beautiful graphs online that they show you the segments where uh, sine, cosine, tangent, and the other tricks, uh, uh, secant, cosecant, and cotangent, what their physical meaning is for a unit circle okay so what we're going to do now is take a look at what the tan function looks like and this is a little bit more difficult to graph uh, because it doesn't it's not based on just us reading off the coordinate system uh, for a unit circle it's the ratio of y divided by x right y over x so we start getting asymptotes because one thing that we've talked about in mathematics is we can't divide by zero right it's uh, it becomes undefined it's a, it, we get infinity uh we really it's a huge obstacle for us in math where we can't divide by zero we don't know what happens 
uh, we can approach and ask them to a certain direction and see what happens with that asymptote but we don't know exactly what happens when we divide by zero and that's one of the pitfalls of uh, one of the limitations one of the restrictions we have in mathematics on the flip side uh, one of the most beautiful properties of zero is it allows us to solve equations it allows us to factor things and as long as we have multiple things multiply together to give us zero we can split those up and set each one equal to zero right because the only way you can multiply a whole bunch of things to give you a zero is if at least one of them is zero right so if we're trying to solve for an equation if we don't know you know which one is zero we solve for all of them equaling zero because they're all possible solutions, right? And we talked a little bit about this um, in the language of mathematics uh, in uh, series 3A or 3B, if you're following that stuff. And it's beautiful when we're learning how to factor polynomials specifically, right? So what we're gonna do right now is create the grid for the tan function. And the tan function is not like the sine and cosine function, the range, um, what the what the tan values can be change range from negative infinity to infinity for the values but at certain theta uh, coordinates we end up getting asymptotes because we end up dividing by zero right as we talked about tan is y divided by x which is really sine theta divided by cos theta right so if we're dividing by cos theta, any place where cos theta is zero, we get an asymptote, we can't divide by zero. So those become our vertical asymptotes. So let's draw this thing and we'll take it from one, two, three, four. So we'll do it here as well. So what we got here is we're again going to look at what happens to us, what the ratio of y to x is, what the ratio of sine versus cosine is as we move around the circle, as we vary theta, right? So our x-axis is theta and our y-axis is now tan theta. Okay. Now, We're going to mark these from 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, to negative 1. But that's not the limit of what the, uh, tan theta can be. We're just doing this to stay on the same scale as the sine and the cos graph, right? And the critical points that we're looking at are 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360 again, right? At these four coordinates, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? At these four points. So we're going to throw these on here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 90, 1, 2, 3, 4, 180 degrees, 1, 2, 3, 4, 270 degrees, 1, 2, 3, 4, 360 degrees. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, what happens at 0, right, uh, because that's where we're starting. So at zero degrees tan theta is sine divided by cos y divided by x our y value is zero right our x value is one because our radius is one zero divided by one is zero so that's straightforward let's go up to 90 degrees at this point right here because that's where things change right as we move around the circle, our y value is increasing and our x value is decreasing, right? So if our y value is increasing, our x value is decreasing, the numerator 
is increasing and the denominator is decreasing, right? So let's put tan theta here just so you see. Oops. Tan theta is sine theta divided by cos theta. So as y, the numerator, increases, as the top value increases, the bottom number decreases, what happens is we get a line like this and pretty rapidly we see it just going up to infinity because as soon as we hit this point, our x value is getting smaller and smaller. And if you recall, if you divide by a really small number, then what you end up getting is a huge number, right? So if we're approaching zero, right? Over here, if we're approaching zero, we're, get, we're dividing by a smaller and smaller number. And at the point zero, the number is undefined, but we're infinitely getting close to zero. That means y divided by x, sine divided by cos is getting infinitely larger y is positive x is positive so we're going to be getting infinitely larger in the positive direction positive infinity so what happens is we end up getting an asymptote here because at 90 degrees cos is zero right and sine is approaching one and you can see this on this graph right as we move along this thing this is what we're mapping here, right? Our y values getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Our x values getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And it's approaching zero, right? Cos is approaching zero. All of a sudden, we're going to get a division by zero and we'll get an asymptote. So the graph of a tan function looks like this. Right. Now, Let's take this to negative 90 as well, because what happens with this is negative 90. Let's extend this at negative 90 degrees. If we go to negative 90, we're going down this way, right? So we're at 270 degrees. Negative 90 degrees is 270 degrees, right? If we're here, our cos is zero again. So again, we have an asymptote. It's negative one divided by zero. We can't do that, right? So we have an asymptote here as well. And what happens is this graph becomes like this, okay? So we have a curve. That's what a tan function looks like. And if we graph this thing for this zone, what we're going to see is when we go to 180 degrees, we have 0 divided by negative 1. The sine is 0 and the cos is negative 1. 0 divided by negative 1 is 0, right? 0 divided by negative 1 is 0. And 270 degrees is the same as negative 90 degrees. And we know that's an asymptote because we're going to have negative 1 divided by 0. So this becomes an asymptote as well. So all of a sudden, we have another zone here. And what the graph of this looks like, if you take a look at the function here, in this area, in this zone, from 90 to 180, in quadrant 2, from 90 to 180, the sine is positive, but the cos is negative. So positive divided by negative is negative. So the graph is below the x-axis, so our tan value is negative. Over from 180 to 270, 180 to 270, our x is negative and our y is and negative as well, right? Our y is negative and our x is negative. So negative divided by negative, we get positive. Right? 
And if we were able to, if my paper was long enough, we go another 90 degrees past 360, we would see the same pattern repeating. So at 360 degrees, we're at zero again. It's the same deal, right? This graph looks like this. And that goes up like that until we hit the other asymptote at 360 plus 90, right? 360, 450, I guess, right? So that becomes another asymptote. Now, this is what the trig functions look like, our basic trig identities, our basic, not identities, our basic trig functions look like. That's the sine function, the cos function, and the tan function. And there's terminology we have to learn on these as well, okay? As far as the terminology goes, it's pretty intuitive. Um, the period of a function is how long it takes for the graph to repeat itself. And a period of a sine graph is 360 degrees, okay? So the period, and T represents the period, is from zero, right, to 360. So our period for a sine function is 360 degrees. Our period for a cos function is again, 360 degrees, right? But our period for a tan function is 180 degrees because it repeats every 180, right? So a period for a tan function is 180 degrees. Okay. So that's one of the first things you have to learn as far as terminology goes, the period of a function. The other thing you have to know about this is, is the amplitude of a function. What the average between the peak and the trough are, right? The amplitude of a function here is equal to one, right? So the amplitude of a sine or a cosine function is just basically the radius of the circle, right? If we increase this radius to two units, our circle becomes bigger. If we decrease the circle, the radius, then what happens is our amplitude gets smaller, right? And the amplitude for a cos function, again, it's one. And the tan function goes from negative infinity to positive infinity, and uh, there is no amplitude. Amplitude is infinity, right? It's or negative infinity. I'm not sure really what they call it. Uh, it's just it goes. There is no amplitude. It goes on forever in both directions, and that's some of the basic concepts that you have to understand about trig functions. And we're going to come back to this when, and we're going to regraph these with radians. Uh, I use degrees usually in general to introduce trigonometry to people because people are familiar with degrees. But degrees becomes useless to us. Not useless, but we don't end up using it in higher level mathematics because everything uh, becomes radians. And we'll talk about radians uh, most likely in the next video or the next couple of videos because radians is... Um, what brings in the the magic number pi the rational number pi and on a unit circle just the teaser on a unit circle the distance that we travel along an arc when we go half a circle is pi and what a radian is in short form is if you travel one radian in angle and radian is an angle so instead of degrees you go radians right if we travel one radian along a circle, that means we've traveled the same distance as the radius along the arc, okay? So if we travel, the radius here for unit circle is one. If we travel one unit along the arc of a circle and we stop, that's equivalent to one radian. And the conversion relation, I think it's uh, approximately 57 degrees, 57.3 degrees is equal to one radians. But we'll confirm that when we start doing conversions and talking about radians. And this is basically our...
basics of trigonometry, trig identities. And what we're going to do in the next few videos is introduce the concept of radians and take a look at how radians are related to degrees. We're going to look at special triangles. Uh, we're going to uh, we're going to graph some functions. We're going to look at some problems. We'll look at the Ferris wheel. We'll look at some type questions. Uh, we'll change these guys, right? We'll change their amplitude. We'll do a phase shift. We'll change the frequency. Um, we'll crunch them up and manipulate these things and flip them and see how the graphs of those look like and what happens with the function. What happens to y is equal to sine theta if we put numbers in there, right? If we start manipulating it and multiplying it with things. Um, and this is it. There's a lot of terminology here. Uh, learn this stuff and get a nice feel for what's going on, right? Trigonometry is not just about triangles, but it's about circles um, in huge part, right? And it's about cyclic functions and it's about us understanding cyclic functions and our trig ratios are exactly that the ratios of the size of a triangle right angle triangle as we move around the circle